Hey everyone, continuing this really week-long deep dive into Coach Musselman and his staff system at Arkansas and really love this possession against Auburn. I think it highlights some of their core tenets and what they really are emphasized this year to their players of understanding putting putting the defense in disadvantageous positions, reading the floor, uh, and just understanding how to set up uh, an action to score. So to run it back, and you know, you saw how it ends in a made three-pointer off a hammer screen. So bringing up the ball with pace, and I'm going to pause it right before the screen is set, and I want to go over this hypothetical to show what I'm talking about. So I really want to start it right here. So the screen is coming, uh, but number two on Arkansas, instead of staying in the perimeter, he goes to the dunker spot, and it's the really small, minute, but yet intricate and so important detail that truly makes this possession. So when the ball screen occurs, it's right. All right, the ball screen is starting right now. So let's you know, do this hypothetical. Say we don't know that it ends in a made three, and we really don't know how the pick and roll coverage you know, goes. Say we don't have the scouting you know, knowledge that Auburn has, for example. So let's think about it. Let's start from low to high. So I'm going to bring my mouse onto the screen. So if we're thinking, who, the, who can the tag man be? What can the, you know, the coverage you know, potential be? Let's get our, our coach thinking hats on. It doesn't make sense, and it's not going to be the low man where my mouse is. You know, if he is the tag man on the roller and you follow where my mouse goes, you know, the plane, the tracking of my mouse, all Arkansas has to do is turn the corner, whip a pass around for a wide-open, uncontested two layup. Obviously, as we all know, the goal of pick-and-roll defense isn't to give up wide-open layups. It's to stop the pick-and-roll. So we can pretty much eliminate the low man here on the weak side from, tag, from being the tag man. Now... Let's go to number three where my mouse is on Auburn. Can he be the tag man? The answer there is likely no. It's going to be no. One, first and foremost, I mean, this 15 on Arkansas can see his head isn't even turned. Also, he can see that number 33 on Arkansas has a fist up. He knows he's being screened. It's going to be a hammer screen, as we saw, that ends in a made three-pointer. But also, why can't he be the tag man? If he is the tag man and then he vacates his spot, uh, right here and comes to and follows my mouse to be the tag man and he's putting the nail defender in a really awful spot the nail defender then has to cover three players at once he has to account for the guard because the guards man's going to be the guards defender his auburn's his teammate on auburn is going to be screened he then has to account for the nail defender the arkansas player on the perimeter and then 33 in arkansas right here so it can't be him so the tag man is going to be has to be the nail defender. And the nail defender, he's in the right spot. This is the proper place to be for, you know, this empty ball screen. So we know that 24 drops. And he also, you know, he also has to drop because if he hedges as well, Arkansas can just do a short roll uh, for an open, uncontested two, and that's not enough time for the nail defender to help. So this is what I mean by putting a defense in a bad position, a bad situation. Arkansas, I'm sure, you know, with the scouting, with the, the you know, the intelligence, the years of experience, that the staff has and the IQ of, of the players, they know what the defense is going to do. They have already put them in a bad spot, bad situation. And I really can't stress enough uh, how number two on Arkansas staying in the dunker spot is huge. Because if he was, well, let's, let's actually let the clip go. So the pass is made here. And why is it so open and uncontested? You see five runs out a little bit. But if number two in Arkansas, if he was at the three-point line, that means the defend, his defender would be closer to the three-point line, and this three could be contested. It wouldn't be wide open. So going back to the ball screen, screen is set, 24 to drop to protect the short roll. But now, look, the guard, it was a great screen set on the back hip. Can't emphasize that enough. Have to set the screen. It's a best practice. Set the ball screen of your defender's back hip. So the guard's taking out of the play. The nail defender now, he can't cheat. He has to fully commit. Love this by the ball handler, really gathering his feet and jumping in the air to make sure that it's the two-on-one -on, on the weak side right here or the hammer screen where that is, that's maintained. The, no, it's not compromised. So he gathers, gets two defenders right here to commit. Once again, the dunker spot holds this defender because if he leaves, there's a wide open two under the basket. All he has to make sure is that the screen is set solidly, which it is. Now, Auburn does a good job getting their hands on it. You know, good, great length and wingspan by the Auburn de defender, but just a, too good of a play, too good of a pass. Wide open three. Can't stress enough. The amount of detail and study that goes into that one possession just shows so many details about the Arkansas program under Coach Musselman. Unfortunate that the season ended short, obviously, for everyone, but really excited to see how Arkansas progresses next season in year two of the Coach Musselman system. 
Uh, really love start taking the time this week to really go deep into the Arkansas Razorbacks this year. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy as well.